and we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Mitri Kornikov. I'm your host. Uh, joining me today, my incredible co-host, Helena Cherishenko, and you are watching the season finale of All Listening. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, on SoundCloud or iTunes, uh, season finale of Translators so, Air. Eh, don't freak out. It's not the very last episode. <laughs> At least we hope so. Uh, we have just finished recording the second season. Uh, we had 19 episodes, and this is going to be our 20th episode of the second we season. Actually, the second we actually recorded 20 episodes, and this is the 21st. Did we? Um, we did. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm always having math problems, so that's why <laughs> I, just, I decided to become a translator so I could focus on words <laughs> and not numbers. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is just a bonus episode. Uh, we just decided that uh, we want to share our experience of running the second season, what went, went well, what didn't went well, uh, share some stories uh, and give you a little bit of a, a feedback. And of course, we need to mention our sponsor, Marquette. Uh, these, these awesome people have sponsored the second season of Translators on Air, so if you haven't check out their website yet. Uh, there is a green button below this video, or there is a first link in the description of this video on YouTube or SoundCloud on iTunes. Check them out. Uh, this is a great way to say thanks to us for the second season, because uh, uh, the more people visit this link, uh, the higher the chances they pick up for a first season uh, our show. So, uh, Elena, how are you? <laughs> How's your day? Uh, my day was crazy. Like it's been for the past, I think, three weeks. It looks like people are getting back from their, I don't know, winter vacations, winter slumber, wherever they were, I mean, clients. And yeah, I'm a bit swamped with work at the moment. And today was no exception. I did, uh, yeah, a couple of proofreadings. I'm also working on my own project of. Uh, translating and publishing uh, the translations of books, which is it's a very, very early stage and I'm a bit procrastinating a bit because it's new and scary, but it's moving slowly, <laughs> but still moving forward. How about you? How is um, it? Uh, well, my, my day is okay. Uh, uh, whenever it's Wednesday, my day is kind of split in half. So uh, uh, I wake up, I do a little bit of admin work and then it's a crowdcast time, and after that, I upload stuff to YouTube and SoundCloud. So uh, I don't really work on Wednesdays because <laughs> I, I, I had to focus on, on, on this thing here. Uh, but my month uh, has been kind of slow, really. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, a lot of tiny, small projects. Like yesterday, I translated three projects. One was uh, four words long. The other one was. 100 words weren't long, <laughs> and the third one was 24 words long. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm yeah. the king of tiny, tiny projects at the moment. But I, I'm hoping that the work will pick up because, you know, this is how it goes when you're yeah, freelance. It always, it always ups and downs like a roller coaster, right? So right now I'm going down uh, work wise, uh, but uh, you, you know how it goes. Every time you think that you, you're never going to work as a translator again, it will just keeps piling up and like, the, the gates of hell open. <laughs> yeah, and my experience all, all... that as, so, as soon as you find something you want to uh, busy yourself with while you don't have so much work, then that's the moment when it starts to yeah to pour. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, the, the, I, th I think the best way to uh get a new project is to announce that you're going on vacation <laughs> yeah that that works too but i think i think you should probably be really going on vacation otherwise it won't work <laughs> yeah of, of course absolutely you have you actually have to go through it you actually have to buy tickets and let get on a plane the moment you get on a plane your info yeah. is going to explode mm -hmm. work <laughs> <laughs> so right so, uh, uh, speaking how, about how, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the our our second season and uh, how did it go? So <laughs> yeah, Tanya says, just be careful what you for exactly. That that's yeah. You should always think twice before you wish for something. <laughs> um, what was what went? Uh, okay, let's start with what went wrong this season. Was there anything that went wrong? We changed the name 
Well, basically, the the start of the season was pretty dramatic, wasn't it? Now it seems like like it's, it's been a long time ago, uh, but at the moment, uh, it was a pretty interesting story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of you guys know that uh, we had the first season, and the first season was quite different because, first of all, it had a different name. Uh, we were called Blabbing Translators back then. Uh, and we were using a, a different platform called blab.com uh, or .io. I don't remember the... the yeah, so uh, the platform was pretty awesome. It was quite similar to Crowdcast, so the thing that we are, we are using right now. But uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> right before we wanted to start a second season of our show, the platform... I think it was two weeks, two weeks before the scheduled date where, where I, already, I already had, I don't know, five or probably even 10 guests lined up for the coming weeks. And then two weeks before this, the scheduled date yeah. uh, of the first episode, they decided to kill the platform. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I found out accidentally actually because they didn't send any emails. So they didn't warn their active users that they're gonna close the platform. And I was just browsing my, on my website and, re and realized that the embeds were not working and i was what the hell is going on and then i visited the website and realized that we don't we, we don't have a platform to host our talk shows anymore so this was quite stressful and i tried to forget it <laughs> because uh, i spent hours and hours and days actually to find a new platform and we found crowdcast uh which is a pretty nice platform uh it's much more convenient compared to what lab was because well, unless at, at least this this platform has more focus because Blab they they were trying to appeal to everyone. They were trying to attract yeah. young audiences, and you could could often find uh, people uh, who are just streaming video games or teenagers uh, just taking selfies or whatever teenagers do these days. And uh, Crowdcast, on the other hand, is more professional. Uh, they have a paid plan, so. Uh, we are hosting uh, those tax shows. We have to pay for a URI plan. Uh, that's why we have a sponsor. And uh, yeah, uh, for finding the platform was a challenge, but uh, well, I'm quite happy with what we have right now. Of course, uh, there are a few challenges as always, uh, because when you're running a, a live streaming webinar, uh, you, there are quite a few things that uh, you could, uh, you Cannot, well, you could foresee that uh, there's going to be problems with internet connection, but there's nothing you can really do to fix that. Yeah. Like like last week, uh, we had uh, a webinar with uh, Lucy Brooks, and I'm really, uh, I feel really sorry for Lucy because uh, she she was experiencing experiencing problems uh, with Echo, and she had to suffer through 40 minutes of. Uh, she did, but she did extremely well. She, I, I'm not sure that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I would have been able to do it for an hour. And she did, so since she was the guest, she did uh, most of the talking. And she did just, I listened to the recording and she did just great. So if you hadn't yes. been uh, watching us live, and if, you, if, if not for a couple of remarks on her side about the echo, you wouldn't have guessed that she had any technical problems. So yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's the biggest problem when you are running a webinar and no, no matter what platform you are using, there's always this uh, technical challenge that uh, is quite limiting uh, and there is nothing you can really do about it. So uh, I wanted to apologize to all our viewers or listeners who uh, had experienced some problems uh, with technology or with video stream or audience stream. And of course, to Lucy, if she's watching this, uh, uh, video that uh, she did a really great job and i would like to thank her for being a good good soldier <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> now, we also had other problems because uh as you know guys we we have guests every 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 episode we invite someone and we had a topic of a conversation and we just not we don't just invite people out of blue and we just send them a link and they connect. We actually have a process and we have a quite a quite a complicated process and it's uh, well developed. So we have test calls just in order to make sure that we don't actually going to have any kind of problems during the webinar. Of course, as, as you can see, not, not always uh, uh, everything is 
uh, going as smooth as we wish, but uh, those test calls, they actually help us uh, eliminate any potential problems or at least uh, to fix some of the issues. And we, we had one or two guests who, yeah. yeah, we had we had one guest who could not make it to the live recording because uh, we just couldn't. We just couldn't figure out how to, how to make uh, his equipment work. Yeah, that was a pity. Actually, that was a pity, uh, especially uh, because that guest was recommended by uh, one of our viewers. Uh, and uh, that's actually what went very well, at least from my point of view. <laughs> um, uh, the thing is that this season, a lot of people recommended uh, some interesting people for our, from our profession. Uh, whom we could invite, and there were also there was also a couple of people who filled out our form on the website. Um, no, Leonora, it wasn't this episode's guest. <laughs> he was <laughs> early in the season. This is just an episode. We actually did uh, this kind of episode last season, and mm -hmm. uh, actually last season it was because one of the guests couldn't make it, uh, but it was so much fun and also there were a couple of ideas uh, that were uh, planted during that uh, episode that actually came to live in season two and that was great so we decided to do it again in case some of you uh, give us some awesome ideas that we could implement in season three uh, so what was really good is that people started uh, to recommend interesting people from the industry that uh, I wouldn't have thought of inviting just because I didn't uh, know them either personally or online. Uh, and uh, I want to once again thank Nancy Matisse, who was also on the show in back in November and who recommended, I think, three or four guests, uh, mm -hmm. including Lucy, uh, including uh, Rudy and uh, Rebecca, Petras from Translators Without Borders. We had wonderful sessions with them. They were really, really passionate. That's that's one of my favorite things uh, about this show and about the guests. We usually have that people are really passionate about what they do, uh, be it translation uh, in general or some uh, particular uh, particular uh, tasks they are involved in. Uh, or some aspects of our job, they are really passionate, and it's it's always a pleasure to talk to people who who love what they are doing, right, Dmitri? Yeah, it's always a pleasure, and it makes it easier for us as host of this show because when you have a, a person who is so uh, passionate about what they do, we don't really we, we don't really have to uh, be here <laughs> because uh, I remember when we had a uh, who was it. Uh, uh, we had a guest on our show when we we barely we barely made any comments or barely made any questions. The conversation was flowing so effortlessly on her on her end, uh, and uh, we we just we were sitting here. It was, there and it was Jeanette. It was Jeanette, and we were talking yes. about translation yes. comments. She was, she was so yeah. she was so awesomely prepared, and she was really she, that idea of translation comments. It was something. It was. It was, well, I had a feeling that this idea was really her baby, if I can put it so, and yeah. she was so in love with it, and she was so happy to talk about it, so, yeah, it was great, and, yeah, we barely made any comments at all, because she did basically all of the talking, but it, it and it was, yeah, so, it was really natural, it didn't sound like a presentation, it was just someone talking about something they really love, and, yeah, what something they enjoy doing. Yeah, so 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 uh, what are the challenges we had? Uh, I guess uh, we could consider a challenge uh, a rebranding uh, because, like I said, we last season we had a different name, a different show. Uh, it was called Blabbing Translators, and uh, since actually... the name was the name was connected to the platform <laughs> called Blab, uh, we thought that. It doesn't make sense to. And it was the only the thing. It, it was the only thing that got uh, picked on from time to time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, people, people really, yeah. really, really hated the name Blab, Blab some in translator people. because yeah. of some, some people, some people, not all of them, of course, because Blab has a negative connotation uh, to talk mindlessly or something like that. Yeah. And it was not quite uh, what we were actually doing because we were not talking mindlessly. Of course, we, we, we love to Blab. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, why we're doing this episode, actually. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> just to blab with you guys uh, and share uh, our experiences. Uh, but yeah, we 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 had to uh, do a complete rebranding. Uh, we run a poll on Twitter. Uh, we suggested a few names. Actually, some of the names were suggested by um, yeah people who are on our mailing list. So huge thank you to everyone who was participating in that. And once we figure out the name, uh, and we decided that. Uh, we are quite happy with it. Uh, I'd created a new website. I had to build a website from scratch. Uh, and it was actually fun. I love building a website, as you know. Uh, this is my, <laughs> my second passion after translation and languages. Uh, yeah, it was a, a fun project. And um, I'm quite impressed with uh, what we have achieved on, on, on web design and email list building uh, side of things, because uh, our, our mailing list has grown from a hundred people to five hundred people in in the course of the second season, so which is pretty awesome, I think. So huge and thank you to everyone who is uh, on our main list who has not marked us as spam <laughs> <laughs> yet. And are people, are people actually doing it? <laughs> I need to check. Actually, I need to check. Uh, uh, well, there are, there are some sometimes uh, when you manage in a mailing list because the. Uh, Here's the thing about uh, running a, a show or uh, uh, a webinar or anything. Uh, you need to you need to have uh, something that brings people over. For example, uh, uh, so a social media presence or a mailing list or a website or whatever. So, so uh, there's got to be a way for you to announce uh, new webinars, and there's got to be a way for people to register for those webinars. And what I love about Crowdcast actually is that it allows us to keep track of uh, of quite uh, a lot of things. Uh, we can see who sign up from uh, Twitter, Facebook, or directly from clicking the link uh, in our um, mailing list. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, social media uh, is not wasn't quite effective uh, for attracting people to our webinars. So, and and you and you know that we. I personally tweet a lot about translators on air. I think people hate me for that <laughs> because if you if you look at my Twitter, we could make a poll. Actually, do you hate Dmitry for tweeting so yeah. much about translators on air? <laughs> yeah, I, I personally hate it because uh, this is the only thing I tweet about. I, I, I kind of automated a lot of stuff uh, yeah. through buffers, so a lot of times those tweets just they just go automatically. And uh, I barely tweet anything else but translators on air. And this 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 kind of uh, aggressive content promotion, uh, it may, may, it might, I think, it might put some people off. And that's why uh, we we actually have more people sign up from uh, our newsletter because every time we announce a new episode, uh, I send out uh, an email. Uh, it has the same format. Uh, I introduce the guests. Uh, I uh, list the kinds of uh, what topics we will be talking about, and it's uh, it was the most effective tool for marketing, hmm. and we, which is actually uh, marketing is actually I think one of the biggest challenges uh, when you have a, a webinar or a talk show like this because uh, I really love what we are doing here. I don't know about you, Anna, but I'm really enjoying this. Uh, yeah. This is fun. This is fun. It it's, is. it's always nice. It's always nice to connect uh, with your peers, and especially when you don't have that many chances to see, uh, meet them in person, uh, because uh, not everyone can go to a conference. Not everyone could uh, go to uh, another country, so they could just be uh, at the, at the conference and network. And this is a great way to connect with people, to see each other's faces, to hear each other's voices, and to actually have, well, kind of like real life conversation. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that I love about uh, our show is uh, the opportunities that arise from them. And uh, I'm seeing at the moment Tina's comment uh, that you should be her uh, special guest for 
our email marketing talk, and that illustrates this perfectly. When I think well, about it, I have I have so many I have so many I've had so many opportunities arising from the show because I get to know so many people. We had uh, how many? I think nineteen episodes last time. Okay, one was was yeah. an interview with you. I mean, season yeah. one. One was an interview with you, and I knew before. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this uh, this season we had uh, another twenty episodes. Uh, so twenty talks with different people, and uh, yeah, uh, I met some of the people who were interviewed during season one last uh, last year in Prague. And uh, basically, that's how uh, our localized this team started. It's uh, a project, yeah, a team uh, that um, we set up together with other translators uh, to localize apps. And uh, yeah, so this is how that project that project started. Uh, then this is the only reason I think that I was at this point uh, I was invited to test with his podcast and so so was you for you and uh, so it really helps to get to know other uh, translators and make some connections and yeah, build some friendships probably so I think it's it's also a great thing yeah time. yeah and uh, i think we we managed to attract a whole bunch of really 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 awfully nice people i would say yeah. uh, people who are very engaged and who always ask questions uh, who always share our episodes so uh, i would like to thank everyone who is watching listening uh following us uh it, it this really means a lot and this is what one of the reasons why we are doing this uh just so we could get this thing out there so uh if you're enjoying our episodes, please, please, please make sure you share them on Twitter, Facebook, or any other social network that you use. You can use hashtag translators on air. Uh, I, I, I have seen people using it, but not as actively as I would hope. So uh, if you're really enjoying these episodes, please share them with hashtag and uh, let more people know about our show. Uh, actually, uh, we're gonna be featured in one of the articles uh, uh, from our colleagues. Uh, I, I was mentioned on Facebook somewhere. Someone is preparing a list of uh, resources for translators, and uh, actually, it wasn't it wasn't even me who suggested to include translators on air. Uh, I think Simon uh, mm -hmm. Kramer uh, uh, mentioned our show that uh, it should be included in the list of uh, uh, webinars for translators. Well, we don't actually. I don't really think that we could call ourselves a webinar, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, talk show is is always uh, seems a bit, a bit weird for translators. Talk translators talk show. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I would call it. Uh, I I think the best, uh, uh, the most accurate term to describe it would be interview. Or maybe a yeah, podcast, a video podcast, a video video cast. cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which that's, turns, that's which, which later turns into a podcast, which is also uploaded to iTunes and SoundCloud. That's where I sometimes listen to our uh, episodes. For example, the episode with Lucy, where we had some technical problem, and I just wanted to make sure to to, to see how it uh, actually was recorded. Uh, I listen. I listened to it on iTunes, and it's actually a great way because I I'm just walking my dog and listen to myself talking. It's a bit weird, but yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah, actually listen to listen to our episodes? Have you listened to any of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before uploading them, uh, I have yeah. to uh, download the video from Crowdcast. Then I have to convert video into audio version, and I I need to make sure that. It sounds okay before I upload them, uh, but yeah, uh, this is uh, this is this is really weird when you're listening to yourself, mm -hmm. uh, to your, your own voice, especially because neither Yelena nor I are native English speakers, and sometimes uh, my inner linguist <laughs> linguist <laughs> is not is not is not happy with uh, my pronunciation or my accent. <laughs> 
but but yeah i think i think it's, it's a great experience nevertheless uh, and, and i think it's, it's a great way, it's, it's, a, it's also a great way to uh deal with perfectionism which all translators have to yes. a certain screw, extent screw the perfectionism. <laughs> <laughs> Because a lot of times perfectionism is what stops you from doing something. And it's, if you, yeah. you if you if you just keep nagging yourself, oh, you you gotta be better at this, you gotta be better. Is you you never actually do anything. Uh, so uh, by actually doing stuff, uh, you you can improve and grow and develop your skills. Yeah, the reason I'm saying it is because it's a, it's a huge problem for me. My perfectionism. It's yeah. And uh, it does exactly what you what you say. It stops. Uh, it sometimes in a lot of times it stops me from doing things that I do things that I want to try, and uh, I'm trying to deal with it. And uh, I think that uh, this row is also a good way to train myself to just let go of it. So that that's another advantage of doing it. For me personally yeah and we had many guests on our show who are actually not native english speakers and and they all did great and of course uh before we actually start recording live uh i can tell that uh, people are nervous and they uh they're afraid they're gonna make a bunch of mistakes but the moment we start recording uh the moment we start talking about the topic of our conversation the topic uh uh, that is actually of great interest to our guests. Uh, they mm -hmm. just they, they just forget about all all kinds of uh, stress, and it's no longer holding them back. Uh, yeah, uh, but talking about uh, mailing lists and stuff, uh, we have a question from Tanya. Uh, yeah. Tanya asks, "Do you actually track conversions, revenue, etc.?" Well. Uh, I have uh, several mailing lists. Uh, of course, this mailing list for translators on air. Uh, I have a mailing list for the Open Mic uh, and uh, my uh, personal uh, newsletter at bestrussiantranslator.com. And the one thing I, I realized that I'm really not an analyst. Uh, and I mean, I could look at numbers. I love looking at numbers. I love looking at graphs and charts and see how many people clicked, how many people opened, but I can't really make any assumptions from it. I can't any, I can't make any analysis from it. And, uh, I think we don't have that, the, the numbers that are required to make some meaningful conclusions because when you have only a few hundred people on a mailing list uh, i don't think that a b testing uh, is actually gonna bring much results because this is just not enough people to actually analyze how how, how, how well your subject lines are doing and stuff like that and it's actually it's a full-time job because uh if you want to be good at it if you want to be good at email marketing if you want to be good at uh, analyzing uh, your email marketing efforts uh, you have to study it uh, you have to take courses you have to be actually spending most of your time doing it it's, it's like a full-time job actually and I, I think a lot of people would agree uh we, i do look at conversions uh, I, I, uh for example on crowdcast uh, every crowdcast uh, we record uh, we could see uh, how many people clicked on a link and how many people signed up, and it shows sources. Uh, but I can't really make any meaningful conclusions from this. I mean, uh, I think that mailing list uh, is bringing many more viewers compared to what we do on social media, but maybe we are not doing, uh, maybe our efforts are not uh, good enough on social media maybe what we do on social media in terms of promoting these uh webinars uh uh video casts uh are not enough to convert more people and in terms of revenue we don't have any revenue really <laughs> uh, neither on on the open mic uh neither on uh translators on the air uh we have a uh, a sponsor who is sponsoring the the season and the sponsorship basically covers our expenses and that's it so we yeah. don't make any money out of it not yet <laughs> at least uh i don't know uh if we ever plan to 
turn this into something that could generate revenue. Uh, but I really don't think we would we would go there because we are doing all right uh, with our own projects, with our own yeah. uh, uh, translation work, uh, and. I'm, I'm personally happy with uh, what I have as a translator. Uh, I'm happy with my clients. I'm happy with my workload. And uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, I have enough work and enough great clients who actually pay decent rates and allow me to spend an hour of my day uh, just so I could spend it on networking and connecting with my colleagues without thinking about money or revenue and generating tons and tons of sales. I, you, I quite <laughs> agree with you. I couldn't possibly answer Tanya's question about conversions, revenue, etc. because I'm uh, not in charge of it in this project and I'm, I'm not particularly interested in it because um, yeah, for the reasons that you mentioned, I'm uh, quite happy with the revenue that my translation business brings me. And uh, I'm also thinking of doing some uh, other things like uh, teaming up with uh, colleagues to market our services together and probably get more clients that way or doing something quite new like publishing uh, my translation of uh, my translations of books and uh, uh, yeah, doing working working on in, in that area, setting up a micro publisher, micro press probably, um, and uh, this is where I want to make more money definitely. But translators on air is not something that I actually view as a, a stream of revenue, and. Um, Yeah, revenue isn't always about money, and in in terms of uh, yeah, non-material re revenue, translators on air brings quite a lot, and uh, I don't think that everything I do has to be paid uh, paid for. So I think that uh, giving back to the profession and uh, giving uh, all you guys an opportunity to listen to interesting people talking about what they love is actually a great thing in itself and uh, I also have a lot yeah. of fun doing it and so yeah and it's it's worth all, all the all the effort and we we do actually we put a lot of effort uh, into creating the show uh, like I said we had a, a very uh, detailed and complicated process so for example uh, every single time when uh, we have a, a new guest Yelena is in charge of uh, communicating and uh, uh, get, uh, getting everything uh, ready for uh, a test call and for the actual live conversation. So Elena has to communicate with guests over email, uh, get their bio, get their profile photo, uh, get the topic of a conversation, prepare questions, uh, all the questions that you should see posted in advance. Uh, the majority of them uh, is prepared by Elena. Uh, oh, so, uh, sometimes. <laughs> well, sometimes by, uh, by 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 the guests yeah. by the guests themselves, if uh, they know what they want to talk about and what kind of questions they want to focus on. Uh, sometimes uh, I post a few questions, but it doesn't happen very often because uh, after Elena creates uh, all has all the materials at hand, she sign, uh, she fills out a, a type form. By the way, type forms people use use type forms. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, I see every now and then people collect uh, feedback using Google Forms or whatever any other uh, form form uh, service and type forms is the best and should be the only way. Uh, I think it should be illegal to use Google Forms to collect feedback or around polls or whatever uh, because type forms are awesome in both in terms of design functionality and integration. So we use type form uh, to uh automate some of the process so every time yeah. Elena, Elena signs uh, fills out a form uh, uh on our website which is uh only visible to her uh i receive an email uh with detailed instructions of the things i need to do so and then the technical part starts where i create uh, a page on crowdcast i 
post questions. Uh, I uh, schedule uh, a newsletter on uh, Mailchimp. Uh, uh, I post. Uh, uh on twitter and facebook make announcements i i also add uh, a sliding notice on the open mic so people who are visiting the open mic could uh, also have a chance to check out the upcoming webinar uh so uh, we do a ton of ton of ton of stuff we actually we, we also use Trello to uh track everything we do we have like a huge board with every single episode uh and uh, the, the, the checklist with all the things we need to, we need to, to do before we actually uh uh start recording our next episode and yeah a lot a, lo a lot of work uh goes into creating a single episode i think i spend at least two, three hours a week uh, on my end. Uh, how many hours do you spend, Yelena? Yeah, it's probably the same for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with, so... uh, if, if you count the, the interview itself, so if... Yeah, yeah, including the interview mm -hmm. itself, yeah. Uh, but I don't really feel like um, I'm wasting my time or that uh, we should be getting more attention or whatever. Uh, I'm quite happy with what we already have. Uh, and I think when you're creating something, uh, it's always a slow process, pro process uh, of growth and it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Uh, you, you just, you cannot create something, even even, even if it's awesome, uh, even if it's as awesome as our talk show, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still gonna be a long, long, long time before it catches on and becomes a viral or whatever you, you can call it. Uh, and it's, it's always a slow process, and uh, but it's fun process. And I think it's worth it because like you said, uh, it's not about the money. Uh, it's, it's all about how we feel uh, and what kind of value, at least what we think of it as a value, what kind of value it brings to our audience. And I think, our ep episodes uh, they have some some value and maybe it's not for everyone of course uh, when you're creating a, a, a webinar or a video cast or podcast for translators it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea it's not like uh, oh i'm doing something for translators uh, then all translators should love it no of <laughs> course not it's, it's, it's it's not gonna it's not never gonna happen this way uh, only small bunch of people going to uh, love what you do and the majority is going to be ignoring you and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's 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 right, Tanya. It's probably a topic for uh, uh, a different conversation. Do it for the money or for the love or for something else entirely. Yeah. But speaking of the side projects, uh, we uh, we actually now involved in, in in yet another side project with with Yelena, and it's actually because of the translators on air, right? Yeah, uh, blaming translators at the time, but the thing is, actually, Evelyn uh, Jamul, who got this idea uh, for this for teaming up and for joining our forces to market our <laughs> services together. Uh, the episode we did with her was on collaboration between translators. It's it's so so interesting. <laughs> I just I just yeah went went back to the episode and uh, it was it was re really interesting. So we first uh, talked to her on uh, then Blavin translators. Then we met in Prague, and uh, then in October she uh, suggested this idea to me. I suggested it to Dmitry. We suggested it to uh, some other translators. Now we have a whole team, and it's all. Uh, yeah, it's in the in the beginning stages, but it's going pretty well, and uh, yeah. it's something I really enjoy because uh, we basically we also use Crowdcast to meet up with the team, at least with part of the team, uh, to talk about what this whole thing is about. And uh, it was it's it's really interesting. I love it about the time we're living in that you don't you you can actually talk to people based in different uh, corners of the world and uh, you can you can build real connections with them and uh, it's it's re it's really nice and uh, I also feel that uh, it really helps me to improve and evolve in professional ways and 
probably in some in some in in a personal way too, uh, because you know uh, how they say that uh, you're the uh, sum of five people that you uh, communicate uh, with most often. So mm -hmm. I feel that if I communicate more with uh, great translators and uh, with people that do some really interesting stuff, then it makes me better too. So yeah. I think I think it's a great way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting how we, uh, everything we are doing uh, we are doing for a reason, and sometimes this this reason is it, it may not be always uh, obvious. And mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the skills that you learn uh, along the way, uh, they might actually be useful in other fields, and mm -hmm. exactly. you might actually you might actually apply them on other projects or in your personal work. Like you said, for example, we we are having this crowdcast every week, and then now we have a, a team of uh, translators specializing on app localization and. We are part of this team, so now we use crowdcast easily to communicate with the team. Uh, we also use other apps, uh, for example, Slack to communicate with the team. And uh, I st started learning Slack when I was uh, uh, had this idea to create a Slack community on the open mic for translators, uh, which is not yeah. doing very well uh, in terms of how people are engaged. Uh, but still, I, I learned Slack there. Uh, and now we are using it to communicate with the team uh, of uh, uh, localize this uh, yeah, and I'm also gonna use Slack on on the open mic as well. So uh, it, it's interesting how uh, everything could be connected, and it how is. one skill one one skill you learn uh, doing something uh, that uh, is not entirely connected with uh, making money or whatever. Uh, sometimes it becomes useful at some point in the future along the way. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It is. It was actually the same with. Uh, I made the website for localize this for for our for this uh, yeah team, <laughs> and uh, it took me way less time and it was way less stressful than when I did my may, may, when I was making my first website uh, for my professional website. It is really interesting because uh, I started uh, making that website back in I mean my website back in. Uh, 2000, I think it was 2015, and it was really stressful. At times, I thought that I just, I, I can't be, I can't really be so stupid that I can't make this website work. Uh, I actually managed to to make it and to make it the way, uh, to make it look the way I wanted to look. Uh, then made uh, the second website uh, for uh, my side project. I love Mondays. Then. I and it was easier. And actually, uh, for localized this website, we're using the same theme that I was using for my uh, I Love Monday website because it's free and you can do some things with it that uh, that yeah that uh, were so you can set set it up in the, in a way that it looks and nice. And although I understand that uh, the website I made, there's a lot of room for improvement, but it is a good solution for a start. So yeah, it, it, it really is interesting how everything you learn along the way uh, may be used at some later stages. And sometimes you don't even know where and how you will be able to use it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tanya asks, do we use a special IT solution for localizing apps? Uh, not yet, not at the moment, because that team that we, uh, Emily and Yelena, has started, uh, it's uh, just uh, in its early stages. So uh, right now we are figuring out our communication uh, and uh, marketing and prospecting and all that stuff. Uh, maybe at later stages we'll have developers. Who knows? Maybe we'll have something uh, custom made for us. So we could look, work on apps, but it's some of us, uh, have, yes, reason. some of us has experience of working uh, with uh, app developers, and uh, most of the time we just work uh, with files directly in our CAD tools and stuff. Yeah. Or good old spreadsheets. <laughs> but mostly CAD tools. <laughs> 
So, uh, what 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 are the plans for the third season? Well, uh, we thought actually it was my idea because uh, we have so much things uh, going on. Yes, Tanya, I love when someone suggests guests. <laughs> so please send me the link. Um, uh, we thought it was actually my idea to try something. Well, it won't be uh, so much new. We decided to make the third season shorter, uh, but then have uh, uh, also have also a shorter period between the seasons, so a shorter season break. Uh, because we have, or at least I have so much go, but you basically, Dmitry, you also have a lot going on at the moment. And yeah, yeah. I have a lot of things going on at the moment, uh, particularly I'm, uh, I want to try my hand at publishing, as I already mentioned. And uh, this is, I, I have always wanted to translate books. I'm also resigning my website, which I've been doing for, I don't know, the past half a year <laughs> uh, to target uh, self-published uh, or independent writers who want uh, to get their books translated into English. Um, and uh, this is something I want to, that's why I want to have a bit more time to work on that too. Um, so we will have the next season will be only 12 episodes long. And actually, then it will be summer, and in summer, people want to have fun and probably not uh, sit in front of the screens watching us talking. Yeah, to, uh, to blab in heads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is why we decided to keep this the third season shorter. And another thing that uh, we're going to try, and this is going to be something quite new, Uh, it was actually suggested by our guest, Jesse Tomlinson, who was on our talk show last season. Jesse suggested that uh, we do a Q&A session where we don't have a particular uh, subject or topic of our conversation beforehand, but where people can just uh, tune in and ask their questions either on screen uh, or in the question section. And uh, actually, the first episode of season three is going to be a Q&A with Jessie Tomlinson, because when she uh, suggested this idea, I suggested that she be the first one to try it out with us. And I'm really looking forward to it, because uh, the episode uh, we had, probably, I didn't, I, I'm not sure uh, how this idea came to Jessie, but probably that was because uh, she had a lot of, Uh, people asked her a lot of questions during the uh, the episode and uh, she was just such a ball of positive energy that uh, yeah, that was awesome. probably the reason why people wanted to ask her so many things and I I really like this idea uh, that and I'm very looking forward to trying it out so they I think these are the the plans and these are the two new Uh, or one and a half new things that uh, we are going uh, to we're going to try out in season three. Yeah, yeah, we we might have uh, a new sponsor. Uh, we are quite sure that uh, if a smart cat gonna pick us up for for season because uh, they actually they offered us to move completely to their smart cat academy. Uh, some of you might know that uh, SmartCat has also signed up for Crowdcast, thanks to thanks to us, uh, because we were the original people, at, at least in <laughs> translation community, who started using Crowdcast, and now we have Tanya uh, using Crowdcast. Uh, now we have uh, SmartCat using Crowdcast to run uh, similar webinars, and I think we we have a few other people who are also using Crowdcast. So it's becoming more and more popular to among translators. So Crowdcast, guys, I think you owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, uh, we, we brought hundreds of people to this platform, uh, either as uh, hosts or either as uh, people who are just watching and tuning in and promoting your platform. So maybe we're due <laughs> for a discount in our one. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, so uh, uh, the folks at SmartCAD, uh, they also have a SmartCAD Academy, uh, which is uh, weekly webinars uh, run on Crowdcast. And uh, uh, they they also have, uh, yes, Tanya, I have signed up for the affiliate, uh, affiliate program, but I was too late because uh, they, they launched it uh, only uh, a few months ago, I think. And the majority of people who signed up for me, uh, they already gone <laughs> so mm. they're not through, through the cycle i think maybe i could email them but i don't think there's going to be a, a ton of money there anyway uh smart cat invite, invited us to be a part of the smart cat academies and uh, we decided that we want to stay independent uh, we want to stay on our own accounts uh, we want to continue working with the, the audience we already have uh of course it's it's always enticing to try something new uh it's always enticing to have a bigger audience because market obviously they have hundreds of people watching their webinars uh, uh but besides that's it's going to be the best thing if we keep keep it small uh but uh, uh yeah keep, keep it small and, and independent yeah yeah, for me, the main reason was because actually it was because if we signed up for uh, if we became part of the Smart Cat Academy, uh, it would feel more like work for me. That was that was the main reason because now we we are able to decide whether we want to make the third season exactly. shorter, how much uh, weeks we want to to have free and things like that and. Uh, if we were yeah. part of something bigger, I would have felt obliged. Probably is the right word. And uh, yeah, the, committed. So this committed. Yes. Yeah, so this uh, ability to be free and uh, do whatever we like <laughs> is it. It is more. It's it's more important for me than uh, a bigger audience that they have at the moment. And uh, at some point, we could actually also grow our audience. Find. Uh, uh, find some sponsors, bigger sponsors who want to sponsor a more expensive plan where we can have more people online and uh, yeah, so we could we could. Yeah, so uh, if you guys know a sponsor who might be interested uh, in partnering up for first season, uh, you should send us uh, their details and maybe we will have a different sponsor. Of course. Uh, Market is great, and I'll be happy to keep pr yeah. promoting them. Keep promoting them because they have a, a really good community manager, uh, Vladimir, who's also used to be a translator. And uh, I can see that everything he is doing, he is uh, uh, doing because he wants to improve how things are in the profession. Of course, uh, he is biased because he's part of the platform that needs to make money. <laughs> and oh yeah, yeah. Tanya suggests so, so we could uh, uh, bring uh, Boza as a sponsor. <laughs> so we can the headsets. Actually, Vladimir is idea. also one of the one of one of uh, the people who are very passionate about what they're doing, and uh, he's. Mm -hmm. We also had him on the show, and but that was actually not because they were sponsoring us. That was just because. Uh, we had a great conversation about uh, technology um and uh, translation technology in particular and it was great talking to him because he's passionate about what he's doing and uh, as i already said today it's one of the favorite things it's one of my favorite things about uh, this show that we get to talk to so many people who enjoy what they're doing and he he's definitely one of them he's uh, very he's really invested in uh, building a great community for smartcat and for promoting the technology which is not going to take away our jobs <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's, it's it's it was i i'm glad that they uh, were sponsoring this season and uh, it would be great if they continued doing it but who knows how it turns out Anyway, we we're still thinking it over, uh, and uh, there is a plenty of things to consider there. Uh, yeah. And uh, we do have ideas who we would like to have uh, as a sponsor if SmartCat doesn't work out. Uh, and we're hoping everything's going to be fine. Uh, I'm sure. I mean, we have a 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what what can we improve uh, in the first season? Do you think we need to improve anything? Well, uh, I could probably switch my internet provider so I don't <laughs> get cut off like <laughs> like I did last uh, during the episode. Uh, some technical stuff like uh, making sure that uh, no other guests would have to go through things that Lucy had to go through last time. I'm not sure that it's in our control though. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, one thing I miss from Blab actually is that Blab allowed to pause the recording. Mm, yeah. And whenever you whenever you had a technical difficulty, you could just pause the recording. Uh, it would still you would still see uh, the guests. Uh, you mm -hmm. could fix the connection, and then you could resume the recording. So that way, the recording, the video, and the audio that uh, we later upload to YouTube and SoundCloud and iTunes yeah. uh, wouldn't be butchered uh, by uh, constant interruptions and constant problems with audio or video stream. This, this is a feature that I, I'd love to see in Crowdcast. Again, Crowdcast folks, if you're listening <laughs> to this, uh, take a note. Uh, it would be, I don't know, I'm not a technical guy. Maybe it's not technically feasible, uh, but Blab did it somehow and it worked. They had, they had the ability to pause the recording uh, fix all the issues and then resume the recording and then download the video. And it was great. I loved it. And I, I missed this feature because uh, as you can see from some of the previous episodes, uh, it's not always goes as smooth as we would hope it would go. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's the internet. Uh, I, I blame it personally. I think it's, it's the internet connection and the fact that we are in different corners of the world yeah, and we, we all have to stream video uh, through our internet channels again yeah i'm not uh, a very technical person i'm not sure how it works but i think it has something to do with the bandwidth and the strength of the internet provider so elon musk if you're watching this make <laughs> internet great again don't send don't send people to space yet let's let's have yes, a great internet yes, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. Let's let's fix internet on Earth then first, uh, and maybe maybe later we can send people to Mars. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't actually think of anything else. It would be great to have uh, people uh, join us on screen. By the way, Tanya, did you manage to make someone? go on screen go live during during your crowdcast this is something that by the way uh wow tanya did that 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 was really great uh by the way i think it's it's just uh i thought i saw there it was oh okay so it yeah, was so someone of who course, already of course. Was uh, when, when <laughs> yeah when people already has experience of appearing on yeah. camera uh they, they are more inclined to join join you on screen <laughs> uh, but yeah it would be fun to invite people on screen uh so they could ask their questions out loud uh i think that would, would be a great idea uh but i'm still not sure if the technology could uh uh, allow this because, as you said, we uh, we had problems with internet connection, uh, video, audio. So if someone forgets to use their headphones, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we might have a, a hard time to uh, putting them on camera. <laughs> and then we also need to think uh, ahead because uh, we we need to have an ideal video. We need to have an idea of audio because we upload it to YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. And uh, we really need to think of people who are watching or listening this in the recording because the majority of people actually, they are watching this or listening this in, in the recording. And we really need to make sure that uh, we avoid any technical uh, difficulties like background noises, uh, the sounds of... Uh, headphones clinging or clapping or whatever yeah. cats meowing dogs barking <laughs> it's it's not possible <laughs> yeah not not with your zoo because you yeah, has a, 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 yeah because i a, have a, a micro zoo 
and and I hope it won't grow anymore. It's it it just <laughs> happens to me. Yeah. I'm not you complaining have four by the way. Cats right now. I have four cats right now. It was and one dog. And one dog. Uh one dog, it was on purpose. All the cats just happened to me. So yeah. I if I if I go into cats the story happen. of yeah, cats happen. If I go into the story of how I got all of my cats, it 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 will take up another hour and yeah, you guys probably Yeah, it's gonna be one of the one of the episodes of the first season, how Yelena got her all all her pets. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want people unsubscribing from our mailing list, you don't, do you? <laughs> people love cats. I think it's gonna yeah, be a I'm great marketing trick. Head. It's gonna bring yeah. so many people. We we could we our email <laughs> is gonna explode, especially if you post some pictures. I can even I can even I sometimes have I'm sometimes having very hard time. Uh, trying to keep the cats uh, off the screen because they all want to. They, at the moment we go live, they all come rushing to me and they want to be on the video to the yeah. Or probably sometimes they just want to have something to eat uh, or just uh, lie on the keyboard and yeah, do their cat stuff. <laughs> <laughs> cats be cats. Yeah, exactly. So, have we covered everything I think we wanted to cover? Yeah, yeah, we pretty much covered everything uh, that we wanted to talk about. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in for this bonus episode. It's it's not it's not standard. We understand it. Uh, it's not what we usually come to expect from our show uh, because we are not the ones who normally do all the talking. So, this this episode is a uh, like a breath of fresh air for us because we can talk, we can blub, we can be funny <laughs> and we can we can talk about cats and dogs. <laughs> yeah. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the second season of Translators on Air. Uh, we are hoping that uh, we're going to be back with the third strong season. We already have a few interesting guests uh, mm -hmm. lining up for the first season. Uh, we just need to figure out uh, the sponsorship. And we pr we'll probably be back uh, in um, six, six weeks, we said. Mm, the first episode of season three will go live on April the 19th. Okay, don't make so any promises. Uh, don't make um. any promises just yet, <laughs> because I, I don't want to. I don't want to wake up one day and realize that Crowdcast is no longer <laughs> exists. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we think approx that will approximately be. the end of approximately <laughs> the end of April, we'll be back uh, with uh, more episodes of Translators on yeah. Air. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who was watching our show during the first and second season of Translators on Air. Uh, if this is the first time you you found out about our show, check out our website at translatorsonair.com. Uh, and if you are enjoying our uh, talk show, if you have an idea who you'd like to be uh, to have on our show, for example, if you have an idea for a great guest, uh, or you can if always you want to become a guest yourself. Or if you want to become a guest yourself, we we, we always want to have awesome people on our show. Uh, go to translatorsonair slash guest and fill out the form and we will be in touch. And of course, uh, the second season of Translators on Air has been sponsored by our friends at Smercat. If for some reason uh, you haven't checked out their website yet, this is your chance. Uh, you can click uh, the green button below this video if you're watching this on Crowdcast, or you can visit the first link in the description of this video or audio. And I guess we'll see you guys in six weeks. Yeah. Approximately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for uh, everyone for watching and listening and have a great uh, March and April guys. Bye bye. bye.